Let's move on to Mike's question. He says, if contributing to only Roth accounts, would my target be 20 to 25% of my net income instead of gross income? If it's still the gross income, then why? Can you talk about why you guys talk about percentages of gross mm -hmm. over net? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's always so funny, Brian, because people like to, they want to game. I, I say game, and I, that sounds negative. I don't mean negative, but they, they want to find ways around. Like, hey, why, why, why do you do gross? Why don't we do net? I don't actually get to see my gross income. I only get to see my net income. What hits my checking account? Why don't you guys base it off of that? And I'm, so again, I'll speak sort of vaguely here to start, and then Brian will kind of dr drill down into, into the details. First, most people, it's much, much easier to know what your gross income is. For most people, if you ask them, hey, how much money did you make last year? Hey, what's your salary? What's your income? It's really, really easy for a lot of people to just target, okay, here's the total number. I make this salary, or what I, the salary plus bonus. We think, well, I make that much, but then I have health insurance taken out, and I got my 401k contribution, but then taxes are out, but then taxes change as my income changes. It's just a more nebulous number to hit. When you shoot for that gross number, it's really, really easy and it removes friction away from calculating what you need to be saving. And if we can move friction away from the behavioral financial decisions we make, we're likely, we're much more likely to make those decisions. Now, practically, there's some math associated with it too, why we like the 20 to 25%. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it does because it's, it's crystal clear. I mean, you, there's no gamesmanship or anything you can do on your gross income number. I also like that it lets you focus on pay yourself first. So many people in our society, Bo, I feel like are, I'll save what's left over. Mm -hmm. And I think when you focus on net income, there's so many filters that have run through the money based upon whatever you chose in your employer's cafeteria plan. Um, you know, there's just a lot of stuff that, that's, that's kind of coming out that you're, you're, you're not getting a good dashboard view. Because remember, if you do what we tell you to do, you will be both the CEO and the CFO of a set multiple seven figure enterprise at some mm -hmm. point. So you need to kind of make sure you're working off the same metrics because uh, it doesn't do you any good if you're basing this number off of gross, this number off of net. I like to just get, hey, give me the top line number because then when you do the simple math of 20, 25%, there, there's, no, there's no playing around mm -hmm. with it. You'll be on point. You can actually budget better and you'll be able to figure out how do I make this plan happen faster. And also we'll challenge you because um, I know when you're 20s, that is very, very much an aspirational goal. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get that next pay raise because of inflation and everything else, as well as your great performance on the job, where they're going to give you a 15% pay raise. And you're like, hey, that's great. Instead of wait, you know, saying, well, let, let's let's take it down to the net, you're like, you know, I'm going to take a good chunk of that, what that takes me up to gross, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make sure that filters down to that percentage that I'm saving and investing for the future. I don't, I don't know if we have, I don't know if we have this, Nate. I'm putting you on the spot, uh, but I think, and I don't think, Reeb, you have to tell me. I don't think we actually made this a true free deliverable. Maybe we, did, maybe we did. If we did, it'll be on the resource page. But we have this thing that shows we came up with it in our Know Your Number course that shows. Okay, if I'm this age and I save this percentage of my income, then I will be able to replace the, oh, look, there it is, right? And it's this great idea. We said, okay, why do we do 25%? Well, if you think about it, our goal, right, we want to be able to replace a majority of our income, but not all of our income when, our, when we retire. What we found is that for folks who can consistently start early in their career, and the earlier you start, the better, if you can hit that 25% number, what you're going to do is you're going to set yourself up with options later in life where you don't have to decrease lifestyle if you don't want to. So you don't want to be that person who's like working and living high in the hog, and then you retire, and all of a sudden your lifestyle drops. Saving 20 25% gives you a lot of flexibility around your ability to do that. We based all those numbers off of growth. So if you've not seen that, go check out the Know Your Number course. It's in there, learn.moneyguy.com, to show you at each age how much to save to get to a certain replacement ratio. So that sheet, um, it is part of the Know Your Number course, but it was so good, we wanted to give you a taste for free. So oh, you can go it. to moneyguy.com slash resources and get that. Um, and so you can find out you know, how much you're saving, how much money you can replace. So yeah. Moneyguy.com so slash resources. Did you see how fast they did that? Yeah.